What does Disney need to do now? Well, what they don't need to do is deal with this anymore, which I'm sure is a relief for, for management and the board. This has been, uh, I've been a bit surprised at how much time they've spent responding to this because I didn't think that uh, Peltz had much of a chance of gaining traction and it doesn't appear that he did. Uh, but now they're back to running the business and they still have the same problems they have had before, which are really industry problems, uh, that direct-to-consumer streaming is just an economically uh, if inferior to the old linear bundle model, which is going away. Uh, and they have to try to figure out how to, how to manage through that. Did Peltz win even as he lost? No, I don't think so. I mean, Disney did some things that they would have done anyway. I mean, Iger was going to come back and cut costs no matter what activists were saying. And he, he did that. Um, I, you know, I don't think that, I don't think that what Peltz did changed the way they're thinking about the business. Do you think he had anything to do, though, with the rise recently in the stock price uh, of, I think it's 58 percent since the lows last uh, October and 30 some percent so far this year? Do you attribute any of that to the to the possibility that Peltz was going to prevail here and 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 hasten whatever transformation is going on? No, I I don't think so. Uh, I've talked to a lot of investors. Nobody expected he was going to win. Disney announced a lot of news on their last earnings call, which mostly was good to very good across a whole range of things, right? There was the sports JV. There was some updates on their animated film slate. There was the, the JV with Epic. Uh, the, the, you know, some, they, they gave guidance for the first time and I don't know how long, right? Like there was a lot of good news on that call. And to the degree that they had an incentive to jam as much good news in there mm -hmm. as possible because of the pelts, proxy fight, you know, that, that right. may have helped the stock a bit. But all that stuff was going to happen one way or the other. And they still have to deliver, right, Doug? I mean, you talked about some of the industry problems, but there's a problem that's very unique to Disney here, which was a major reason Peltz and even other activists were going after the company. Succession, are we any closer to a plan? Not apparently. And I, I look, I think, I think Peltz had some legitimate criticisms, uh, of Disney, particularly things that happened in the past. Um, but, you know, the problem is how do you replace Bob Iger? They've been trying to do it yeah. for 10 years. I think it's very difficult for uh, multiple reasons, not least of which is bringing someone in from the outside into Disney, which has a very, very strong, unique culture, is, is risky. And so then you're sort of down to internal candidates. And if there isn't anyone internally you think can step in the role, you've got a bit of a problem. Right. Well, there's been some more developments, at least reported on some of those internal candidates. At least some names have been bandied around. Alan Bergman, Dana Walden, Josh DeMario, Jimmy Pitaro. Are you encouraged by any of those names? Do you think that they could be another Bob Chapek or they can sort of do what he wasn't able to? <laughs> they could be another Bob, right? <laughs> well, it won't be a Bob, uh, I guess. <laughs> Look, uh, Pitaro has run ESPN, which is sort of its own unit, separate from the the content creative side of Disney. I, I would have a hard time seeing him step into that role. I have nothing against Pitaro. It's just not his background. You know, somebody like Dana Walden, possibly. Uh, you know, she hasn't been at Disney for that long, right? Uh, but even there, it seems like a bit of a stretch, uh, th there's nobody that, that sort of rises to mind, obviously, the way that, you know, Tom Staggs did back in the day. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the stock and, and where you see it heading. You have a market perform rating, I understand, on it, but a t price target below where it is today, $100 a share. Can you untangle that one for me? Yeah, look, I think, you know, in the low 100 range, the stock is probably trading about where it ought to be, given all the sort of developments that have happened, you know, the, the the secular challenges that they face in some of their businesses, but also some of the good news they've had recently, some of the cost cutting. Um, I think that we got so much good news in February that, you know, there might be a little bit of a lack of further good news flow for a while. It was sort mm -hmm. of, they, they, they said everything good that they almost pos possibly could have said. Um, you know, look, obviously, if they have some movies come out and be successful at the box office, right. that that helps that helps things. They have a somewhat light release late this year, but they do have Inside Out 2 coming in June. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which will probably do very well. They have Deadpool coming in July. That's not really necessarily a 